I love how clearly the Catechism says this. God's purpose for our new life in Christ is to make us like Jesus. All of us disobey God. No matter how hard we try, we cannot perfectly obey God's law. But when we turn to Jesus, the perfect human who fulfilled all righteousness on our behalf, and the unblemished lamb who died for the sins of the whole world, we can experience God's forgiveness. So, now what? There are two common errors that happen here, and they fall on either end of a spectrum. The church father, Tertullian, is believed to have said, Just as Jesus was crucified between two thieves, so the gospel is ever crucified between these two errors. What are the two errors? On one end of the spectrum is legalism, and on the other end of the spectrum is antinomianism. Legalism downplays God's grace and forgiveness and the new life that we have in Jesus. It overemphasizes the necessity for us to keep God's law. Legalism says, in order to be accepted by God, I have to fill in the blank. In order to be accepted by God, I have to do this or achieve that. On the other end of the spectrum is antinomianism, which abuses God's grace. It says that since forgiveness is a gift that we cannot earn, then it really doesn't matter how we live in response to that. The word antinomianism literally means anti or against law. Here's how Tim Keller summarizes these two errors. Legalism says that we have to live a holy good life in order to be saved. Antinomianism says that because we are saved, we don't have to live a holy good life. So are you prone towards either of these errors, legalism or antinomianism? Do you see in your own heart either of these two errors? So how do we respond to God's grace in Christ? How do we avoid these two errors? The last few questions in our catechism, questions 361 through 368, help us understand what it looks like to live in response to God's forgiveness. Question 361 asks, does God's forgiveness excuse you from personal obedience? No, God has reconciled me to himself and freed me from bondage to sin in order to conform me to the image of his Son. As I live each day in gratitude for God's forgiveness, I seek to turn from sin and follow Christ in loving obedience. Living in God's forgiveness means living in obedience. It means taking seriously God's rules for holy living. And it means growing more and more to be like Jesus, to be more and more conformed into his image. This process of being transformed, conformed more and more into the image of Christ is called sanctification. As Christians, we'll continue to sin, but we strive to become more and more holy, more and more like Christ as we daily follow Him. Question 362 asks, Are you still affected by your sin, despite God's forgiveness? And the answer, yes. My sinful actions can harm my relationship with God, do lasting damage to others, and leave me conflicted within myself. I live in constant need of Christ's healing grace. We experience this healing grace through the gift and through the power and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit as we daily walk in repentance and faith. And this healing process is called sanctification. Look at how question 364 defines this important word sanctification. What is this healing called? This healing is called sanctification, which means to be made whole and holy. By the work of the Holy Spirit, my mind, will, and desires are increasingly transformed and conformed to the character of Jesus. This is the call of followers of Jesus, to be obedient, to be made increasingly whole and holy, to be wholly transformed and conformed into the character of Jesus. This is sanctification. We don't obey God's rule and law in order to be made right with God. That's legalism. No matter how hard we try, we can't. Forgiveness is a gift of God's grace. But in response to God's grace, we don't disregard God's law. That's antinomianism. No, in response to God's grace, we Christians, we live a life of sanctification, growing more and more into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. 
So how do we go about practically living a life of sanctification? The Catechism gives us a couple of practical helps. First, we can't breeze by an important section that shows up in the answer of question 364. So let's look at that again. Question 364 asks, what is this healing called? This healing is called sanctification, which means to be made whole and holy by the work of the Holy Spirit. My mind, will, and desires are increasingly transformed and conformed to the character of Jesus. Did you catch that? By the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Forgiveness in Jesus is a gift of God's grace, and the process of sanctification is a gift of God's grace, too. We're gifted the Holy Spirit, and it's through the Holy Spirit that we grow daily to be more and more like Jesus. We're progressively sanctified through the power, work, and presence of the Holy Spirit. So do you want to experience sanctification? Do you want to experience this sort of growth? Then lean into the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you anew with His Spirit. Ask for His help for you to listen to and to follow the Spirit's leadership and guidance in your life. We experience sanctification through the work and through the power and through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Second, we experience sanctification through the ministry of the church. Look at question 365. How does the church assist in your sanctification? The church's joyful worship, faithful teaching, grace-filled sacraments, gospel-shaped calendar, compassionate ministry, loving discipline, and caring fellowship all assist my growth in Christ and are channels of God's abundant care for my soul. God gifts you with other people to help you grow to be more like Jesus. He gifts you with regular opportunities to gather to worship Him with His people. And He gifts you with the sacraments through which you have real and tangible encounters with Jesus. So do you want to experience sanctification? Do you want to experience this sort of growth in Christ? Then be vitally connected to a local church. Show up every week for worship. Build deep relationships and participate in the Holy Eucharist often. In closing, look at question 368. What marks a life of sanctification? God calls me to a life marked by gratitude and joy. In gratitude for God's grace in Jesus, I die daily to the desires of my fallen nature. In the joy of knowing that I will become like Jesus, I live each day in service to Him. May this be true of you. May you experience much gratitude and joy in God's grace towards you in Jesus. And in response to that, may you die daily to your sin and experience much joy as you become more and more like Jesus each day. So let's close with a prayer for spiritual provision and protection, which is found on page 90 in our catechism. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Look upon the heartfelt desires of your humble servants and stretch forth the strong hand of your majesty to be our defense against our enemies. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen.